ต่างๆ coming back to formal posture Sudaso list off all the rules yesterday, and each one it was you know, no cell phones, no books, no writing. Can't go out to the store. Each one it was just just a little bit of something else taken away. The rules here are not only. More strict than most of the monasteries that I've lived at, but never been myself. But it seems like they might even be more strict than most prisons. <laughs> <laughs> they've got beds. They got dinner. It's not so hard to smuggle in a cell phone, as I understand. So. <laughs> We've all come here voluntarily, and yeah, it's not to torture ourselves. Uh, we've all come here because we want to be happy, and we want to have peaceful minds that are unstirred by all the things which normally stir people up. We want to have more balance in our lives. Mante Sudaso is mentioning samadhi and samatha yesterday. And one uh, the traditional translation of samadhi is firm establishment of the mind. And we've gotten some preliminary instructions on. Specific technique, bringing our awareness into the body, trying to keep the externals of our body, our hands, our our posture, relatively relatively still. And this all helps for yeah this establishing of the mind in a place of of strength. And so we have these techniques. I'm personally most familiar with breath meditation, so that's yeah, repeatedly and kindly bringing the attention back to the feeling of the in and out breath at some particular point in the body or the whole body. So you're just knowing this in breath and knowing. Next out breath, full length of each breath. And on the face of it, these instructions are very simple. Just stay in the body, stay with the breath. But there's a whole. Which is basically the the ways that we relate to the breath, the ways that we relate to the body, the the manners and the moods and the uh, attitude that we bring to our our formal sessions of meditation. So traditionally speaking, there are uh, five what are called strengths or five uh, spiritual faculties which really aid our. Our practice of of stilling and settling the mind, and those are confidence or faith, energy, mindfulness itself, collectedness, and the wisdom or discernment faculty. 
And so these are all just, uh, yeah, they're not just techniques. It's a, a way of relating to the technique. It's a way of relating to ourselves in a way. And you could consider these like uh, underlying principles. So the first one is yeah, confidence or faith. And this is something which can really add a, a heart quality to our practice. Uh, it's extremely common, almost universal, that when we come to practice for an extended period like this, then yeah, there'll be uh, times when the meditation just seems to flow and then times when it's just seems excessively arid, dry, and chafing, and uh, yeah, like each next out breath just seems so barren, and uh, it's like desert inside it feels sometimes. So yeah, having this quality of, of confidence or faith can yeah, add a little bit of moisturizer to, uh, to the heart. And in a Buddhist context, uh, yeah, the most fundamental or the kernel, the main uh, manifestation or practice of confidence is very simple. It's basically the belief that it is possible to abandon unwholesome states and it is possible to cultivate wholesome states. Just that much. That's Having that the faith that that's possible, then that really makes practice possible. If we don't feel like it's actually possible to abandon unwholesome mental states, the unpleasant mental states, the aridity or the scatteredness that we can often feel, yeah, there, there can seem no reason to, to continue and just want to give up. The desert seems too too long to cross, so hey, you can cultivate this this belief. And uh, yeah, I personally find it to be a incredibly empowering belief. And yeah, we can't totally prove it from the outset, but it's a beautiful and a uh, yeah an empowering hypothesis that we can work with. It is possible to abandon the wholesome states. So the mind will leave the breath, the mind will wander off to the past or the future, and we just bring it back. Yeah, I, I believe it's possible to bring it back. Really, awareness has never left, the breath has always been here. Really, one just needs to open to yeah, the, next, the next breath, and we're right there again. The next quality is effort. And as Bhante Sudasso mentioned yesterday, this faculty of effort or energy, yeah, on the one end of the spectrum it is. It's a, uh, it's a quality which is, yeah, really in can entail some, some striving at times. It's like a, yeah, if one is on the path to, to victory, or it's a heroic, a heroic effort. But oftentimes, and usually for the most part of our practice, it's, it's a lot more subtle than that. It's the extremely gentle bringing back of the mind to the object. It's allowing the mind to yeah, be open to receiving the breath. And we can think about about it like this is as receiving the breath. The breath is always here from the moment we were born to the moment we pass away. The breath is always here and awareness, consciousness, is also already here. So you often hear it saying just bring the mind back or let the mind come back. But over a long period of practice that can feel like a lot of just tug of war. You're just continually pulling it back. It's like you're wrestling with a, like an ox. 
but it doesn't have to be like that because really the main elements, the main ingredients of our practice are always here. Yeah, just opening and, and receiving that, receiving the breath. The tip of the nose or in the abdomen. Receiving each in-breath and each out-breath. Just that simple. That can be, for the most part, the, the extent of effort that we, we bring to the practice. And it can be joyful. The next factor, the next strength, spiritual faculty, is mindfulness. So often you might hear some teachers saying that uh, yeah, mindfulness is the seed, or mindfulness is the cause, and samadhi, or concentration, is the result, it's the fruit. So with this kind of understanding, it's, it's we're laying the seeds, we're watering the seeds, and yeah, the mind will become peaceful, become still, become settled, become, come to experience all the, yeah, the beautiful and exceedingly uh, pleasant aspects that are attended with samadhi in their own time. So we do the work and the fruit comes of its own time. And mindfulness here, uh, yeah, it is this, this technique, just allowing our object to reappear in consciousness after, it's, after the mind or the brain has run away with thoughts. Breath is here. Again and again. In each moment. The next faculty is uh, samadhi itself. So, yeah, this practice of concentration or collectedness is a whole range of yeah, pleasant, pleasant mind states, really. We, as we practice and see more and more refinement and become more and more subtle, more and more delicate, refined, with our awareness, and as the mind becomes more subtle, then the breath itself can settle as well and become more refined. The body can become more tranquil, more settled. And this, with practice, the, the whole breathing process can just become exquisite, just crystal clear, exceedingly cool, very, very, very refreshing. And this takes practice, and again, this is, to some degree, it's, it's the fruit of our, of our efforts of just continually and as consistently as possible being with our object and becoming more and more refined in our awareness of the object. There's so many subtleties of the breath. There's the length. You can notice the length of every in-breath, every out-breath. Is it short? Is it long? Is it medium? There's the temperature of every breath. Is it cool? Is it, is it warm? The speed with which the breath enters the nostril or into the lungs or has an effect on the, the abdomen. There's the smoothness of our sinuses. You can know all these, and the more refined, the more delicate you make your awareness, then yeah, the more subtle the mind becomes, and we can grow to come to experience yeah, very refined states of happiness and pleasure, and even rapture. So this rapture, this joy, you can even thrill shudders going up your spine, chills, 
down the surface of your skin. There's a feeling of lightness, even visual perceptions of light. And these are the fruits that our main main focus is on laying the seeds and continuing to water them. And the final final quality which we can bring to our breath is wisdom or discernment. So this isn't just a robotic or formulaic process. The instructions on paper are very simple. Know every in-breath, know every out-breath. Keep your awareness in the body. But we're not robots. And, and we have so many conditions that are going into the present moment. And we really need to yeah, have skill and uh, a wise understanding of ourself, come to have a, a working understanding with the, the breath, with our object. And one aspect of wisdom is yeah, an attitude of friendliness. So we want to be utmost friends unto ourselves. We want to really nurture this this friendliness with our object. So our thoughts wander off the past, the future, something uncomfortable in the present. even if there's aversion coming up. And this, this kindness, this loving kindness, Pali word is metta, yeah, this itself is a skill. So it's not constantly think pink, just pretend that nothing is happening. It's a, yeah, it's a faculty, it's a, an aspect of discernment. And It's something that we can grow in. It is possible to, to nurture this quality of, of loving kindness. Right now we're practicing it towards ourselves, but really like most aspects of mind, qualities of mind, if we can learn how to cultivate this inwardly, then yeah, we'll be stronger in our relationships with others as well. But for now, we just, yeah, just being kind to yourself, knowing yourself and being as gentle as Imagine, uh, say, like a, a baby chick, like a small chicken, just small enough to fit in the palms of your hand. And if you're holding this this baby chick, you don't want to hold, you don't want to squeeze it, you don't want it to, yeah, to get hurt. But at the same time, you don't want it to fly away. You don't want it to fall out of your, your hands. So you hold it with just the right amount of pressure in a really loving kind of way. And we can do the same with our, our breath, same with our meditation object. Continually paying attention to how we're holding our, our meditation object with just the right pressure. We 
these five qualities of faith, effort, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom, loving kindness. Yeah, try to keep these in mind. And really become strengths and powerful forces in the heart. I think we'll sit for some period and then Bhante Sadasa will guide us on. 